YouTube, my name is Clyde, WorldWarriorTraining.com. Welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to show you defense against the hook punch. We're gonna show it to you in kind of like the Aikido aspect of it, instead of seeing it from the combative side. Normally, hook punches are not done in Aikido. There's no defenses against hook punches in Aikido. It's always a Yoko Minucci strike. So instead of doing a Yoko Minucci showing you how to defend against this, we're gonna show you a hook punch defend against this. So I have Bob Kampka here with me today. Hi, Onigashimasu. So, <clears throat> typical Yoko Minucci strike, obviously, as you can see, here comes the Yoko Minucci, right? That can almost simulate as a hook punch. In a sense, if you have a good imagination, you can picture how that would work, but obviously, as he attacks, I, his hand is on this angle, it's open. This is not as threatening as a hook punch would be. Plus, it's a bigger technique, a hook punch, hey, right? a hook punch, is coming through, okay? Throw your hips in a little bit more. So you, so you have this kind of like haymaker type of punch going on. How do you defend against that in Aikido? You know, tension Aikido especially, how would we defend against that? So there's a lot of things that you can do. You can capture this to where then you can do technique to where you can throw your hips in and throw, or what we would typically do with this is you would come around the head, kick your hips into place, throw into a koshi, pin however you want at that point from the tension Aikido standpoint. <clears throat> Obviously hook punches come a lot faster, they're more compact, sometimes you'll even see where there's not even a step, okay, so if he did it without a step and you have this, or he does take the step, he's coming in deep with this, trying to get around your defense to hit you, okay? so. You have to be mindful about this. The transition isn't like a Yoko Minuchi Shihonagi transition where you're actually kind of trading places. You're actually moving into his center. Now when hook punches usually get thrown, they're not thrown like this. They're thrown more compact, okay? But for the sake of this demonstration, so you can see this, we throw them to where they're a little bit wider and a little, little less circular or hooking for the purpose of this movement. So you can train yourself to get in into the person's center, be able to capture this by blocking it, and then wrapping the arm around the neck and getting the koshi nage from this. Okay, if we did this from a tighter aspect, it's the technique would, it would be different. So you obviously wanna to train to get to that point of throwing these hook punches to be able to get in there. But you also have to be mindful of this punch is gonna hook, still might, still might hit you. So that's why you have to bring up that hand. So when you hook punch, you have to bring this hand up. This hand can come right up and hit, come in for ago ski, okay? Or come right behind his neck. And then this, fist, keep the fist. You don't wanna pull this down to your, basically to your belt line this way. What you wanna do is when you block this punch, you wanna roll this down. This goes back into other things that I've shown in previous videos, like quote the gaishi. You want to create this type of this action with the arm. Sumiyatoshi, okay? Noroskiage. You're still gonna to want to be able to capture that. So when you come through and you hook, you also want to get your hip right into his center to where you can lift him. If you keep turning with this, because of the momentum, he's probably gonna still get thrown, but you're also gonna lose your balance. So you have to work on that stability when you do this. It's not just take this and muscle him going this way. Remember, Aikido is about using somebody else's energy and, the, and their momentum to neutralize the attack. So, <clears throat> excuse me. You want to think smart, okay, like the old term goes, work smart, not hard. So if you work hard to try to get the throw, in my opinion, most people are probably going to turn more once they enter in for the hip toss to get that momentum going to throw, which might throw you off balance and disrupt your stability. So, in my opinion, I don't think you really want to do that. You basically want to enter right in. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show one example of this too. So when he throws the punch and you enter in with this and you keep turning, see how he's able to adjust? The throw might just be a really sloppy fall. So he, really sloppy fall. Now granted, you, you still executed the technique, got the result of defending against a hook punch, 
and getting them down to the ground. Normally, when you start to go do the pin, you do this kind of like inverted ekyo pin to get him into a standing pin. From here, I would just go right to this pin where I'd straighten out his arm, place my knee right above his elbow on his tricep, and I would apply this pin. This might obviously agitate your uke or an attacker to where he might start to roll over to get out of this. That's when you'd move into this pin and basically have him on a standing pin where you're holding him down this way or kneeing on his back, locking him up, however you need, need to do that. So keep that in mind. We're going to show that one more time. So as he goes to throw that punch and you over rotate, that's the type of throw that you're going to have. Then the pin and so on and so forth. The one other thing that you can do that you're going to start seeing more, <coughs> excuse me, with some of the videos is that we don't really focus on this in the videos, but they're there. If you're watching some of the videos, you, you'll see some kind of hidden technique. Um, just to bring up the Hakama, for example, the Hakama, a lot of dojos, a lot of organizations use this as a ranking tool, a status symbol, pretty much, okay? The Hakama is pretty much reserved for Yudancho, which are black belts. Um, for my original organization that I came from, way back in the day was ASU. Our Shihan was Masugi Satomi Shihan and Oroshi Ikeda Shihan. Now, once you pass the 6Q grading, which is your first promotion test at white belt level, you were pretty much required to wear a Hakama. Okay? If anybody knows the, the story of O-sensei oh, and Satomi Sensei with the Hakama, the Hakama is worn, it's part of the uniform, it's worn out of respect for the samurai traditions and the art form that O-sensei created. It was never intended for a ranking status of Yudansha. That kind of went into play once O-sensei died on April 26, 1969. I think after that point, they, Hombu Dojo, the second Doshu um, Kisamaru Ueshiba, started using this as a form of ranking. Okay, the thing that's the main purpose of the Hakama obviously is to hide your footwork so you can't see the other person's footwork and how you're moving. Okay, so this plays a role with hiding footwork. Also, it's a traditional thing to uh, represent the samurai and the samurai traditions and, and things of that nature. So what we're going to be showing with this too, with this next uh, repetition of technique, I'm going to show you how to do the same technique to where you over rotate, but you're going to incorporate something and it's a lake sweep. Okay? Some people are going to beg to differ with me, some Aikido organizations and whatnot if you see this video. Oh, we use lake sweeps all the time. A lot of people kind of question stuff like that when I start talking about certain things that tension Aikido only guys use this, tension Aikido only guys use that. And then I start getting messages, well, we do this too. We train the same way. We do this, we do that. Funny thing is I see videos on those organizations and I don't see those people training the same way that I described in, a, in the video that I just made. Okay? I don't see a lot of leg sweeps going on in Aikido at all. Okay? Some of you are probably going to say, we do it. If you do it, then please share a link in the description below with your comment and show me because I haven't seen any of it. And I don't think Bob has either or any of my other senior students. It's not really prevalent in Aikido where you see actual leg sweeps, deliberate leg sweeps being done. So I'm going to show you one right now. So the same thing. So the hook punch comes in and you get to here. If you over rotate, take your right leg, okay, you could adjust at this point, start to throw him and incorporate that, but that might throw you off balance. So right when you're in this position here, take your right leg throw him. So he goes over your right leg to take him down to the ground and then the same arm pin and then you can move on from there. So one more time. So as he does that, come right in, leg sweep. See how hard that is to do that? He basically pushed me back from his body movement. Apply the pin. That's one way that you can do it, especially if you come across an uke that's strong with his attack. Maybe his ukemi's not there. You know, you, and if you mess up, just kind of like how I just did, you mess up, you can throw the leg sweep in to get the opponent down to the ground. 
Now, the version that I want to show you, I wanted to show you those other videos so you can see the relation between the two, how you can make a mistake, how you can recover from that and still be successful. Here's the actual throw. So as the hook punch comes in, right there, get him on the koshi so he falls right down at your feet. We apply this arm, arm pin pretty much. Like I said, if he starts to roll, you move right with him and you apply this other arm pin. Now, this is the traditional arm pin that we're doing. I don't really apply this to Bob too much because he has an injury on his wrist. That's why I'm showing this arm pin. It's right across top of my thigh and I'm applying pressure on the elbow. Then from there, you can bend his arm into that position and then step away. The nose is running here. Cold in Chicago. So one more time. One punch. Here's the Koshi. Here's the pen. Okay, so now from this angle, same side. <coughs> Move in. There's the Koshi. There's the pen. Roll them over. Here's the pen again. Lock up the arm. Move away. One last time. See how much I messed up from that? Now you can roll them right into this pen. Always want to transition. If you make a mistake, you can still pull off the technique. In training, I've had students say, well, if I make a mistake, they just stop. Don't stop. Still continue your movement. Even if you make the mistake, always finish with something. Don't just go. Oh, like here, for example, Bob throws. I make a mistake here, and then you stop and go, okay, let me start over. You won't learn from that. When you make the mistake, find something else that works. Keep moving. That's why I showed you the late sweep. So you can keep moving from that. So don't just stop your training when you do make a mistake. Like one more. There's the Koshi. There's the pin. Roll them over. Here's the pin again. Finalized. Move off. So, there you have it. Hook punch defense. Koshi Nage. My version tension Aikido style. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Throw a comment down below. For all the people out there that have seen this in other videos, especially with the Lake Sweep that I talked about, find the video, put the link down below so I can see it. I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to the channel, please. Trying to build our channel. We've been doing great. Thank you to all the people out there that have subscribed. And um, we're going to keep trucking on and keep bringing better and better videos for you. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.